All right, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. This is a meeting, a special called meeting of the Historic Preservation Review Board. Uh, roll call. Mr. Owens. Here. Mrs. Hartshorn is absent. Mr. Weaver. Here. Mrs. White. Here. And Mr. Giesler. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, the only order of item of business is a certificate of appropriateness with regard to the Summers building. Um, I guess, first of all, before we get into that as a preliminary matter, um, so this sort of deja vu, we're doing the same thing again. Um, we, we've had multiple meetings on this building, and it's been conveyed over and over again that if there is a change to the plan that we've approved, that you have to come back before the board and get a certificate of appropriateness. And so the, with regard to the storefront fronts, the plan that we approved and what we have repeatedly conveyed is that the storefront portion has to be an accurate um, reproduction of the storefronts that were there originally. And so last week it was noticed that the framing for the storefront had been placed in the building and they do not comply with the certificate of appropriateness, the plan that we approved, and are inconsistent with the um, original storefront buildings. But the first issue is, obviously those plans were changed, and the changed plans had to be sent to a fabricator who then produced these frames that then got put in the window, and yet no one came and, and told us about that or talked to us about that. So why did that happen? Do you want me to go and Sure. Let's start now. So the shop drawings were submitted to us, and uh, they were the, the change from what was in the plans to what the shop drawings showed. Uh, throughout the submittal process, there was an oversight uh, on our part to see that they had changed. Uh, the day that, that the frames went up was the, the first day that we uh, discovered that th they were different from what was approved. And that led to subsequent conversations with the glass manufacturer. And uh, they indicated several reasons for why that change was made. And, and that's what we'll be discussing today. So who made the change? The, the glass company in the shop drawings. And that was not conveyed to the builders or to the designer? We, we were given shop drawings and, and through an oversight they were approved and the next day the manufacturers were out there constructing the frames which again that the, the change was an oversight on our part and then they, they within two days began doing the frames so all of this happened rather quickly and so we did not catch that they had made that change in the shop drawings until they began constructing the frames. So they made the change, the, the, um, the, the client, the subcontractor made the change. Correct. Without, without, they did the design change, but you all did not make the design change. Correct. The, d the design change was initiated by them. By them. Right. And then when they gave us shop drawings, they, uh, we did not catch that they had made that change. Oh. oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the two days after uh, those were reviewed and re and given back to them, uh, they came and, and began doing the framing, which is, to their credit, they came out and started very quickly, but it also, uh, you know, the turnaround was, was much quicker than we had uh, anticipated. Well, um, so in other words, the, as you were walking to work that morning, and they were putting up the, the new frames, we all were realizing that that change was made at the same time. And then, uh, you know, actually I didn't realize it. Jason gave me a call and said, hey, this is different. So I came by there and we looked at it and then spoke with the glass manufacturer and figured out why they had made the change. And then, you know, and I can go over those reasons, but that's kind of the, the, the the way things happen. So obviously, you know, it was, uh, 
not not the way I wanted things to, to unfold, um, but we're we're you know here we are now, and so you know I can explain to you why the uh, the change was made. Well, um, I mean, obviously everyone makes mistakes. I, I guess the, 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 the problematic thing for for I think this board is. I mean, obviously you are, uh, I'm sure, are focused on a lot of different aspects beyond what we're just focused on, but we're very focused on what we're focused Certainly. on. Certainly, yes. The, which is extremely important, and that's the exterior of the building. And so, you know, and, and really we were primarily focused on the storefronts to begin mm -hmm. with before the whole penthouse component mm -hmm. became an issue. And so it's, it's just surprising that a change in that design would slip by like that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not doubting that it did. It's just, it's just right. problematic. Certainly, and I can go into the, the internal details of why that happened, but... Um, well, I don't, I, I'm speaking for myself, I sure. don't think that's necessary. It's just that, um, you know, f from this end, it just... Um, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. <laughs> okay. It doesn't and look I good. realized that. <laughs> when Jason called, I I was hitting my head against against the, a wall because I realized that this oversight, the way this looked, because of the 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 previous issues we had with the rooftop. And so, uh, <clears throat> trust me, of all the people that really wanted this to go a different way, I I was number one in wanting it to to go a different way. And was frustrated that the change had had slipped under the radar. Now, as you know, right now, with material pricing volatility and and just the kind of the insanity of the building market right now, you have to get these things turned around very quickly. And in expediting the, the process, uh, we did not notice this this change. And I. I uh, you know, I understand that that's, uh, you know, from from your perspective, that that seems improbable. But this is the reality of of <coughs> the building industry right now. It's very, very, very fast paced. Uh, under a previous owner, I'm trying to remember. We've had so many different meetings about this building, mm -hmm. but I think it was under the previous owner. And the architect kept coming before us with different storefront layout that we all felt was too contemporary. Uh -huh. And we finally reached an agreement that everything would, everything visible from the street would be wood encased. And, and that's the case. And that's still going to be the case. Absolutely. Okay. The only thing that is changing are the, the bottom, the largest bottom light will be split in half. Like we see, is that what we're seeing here? Correct. That's, this is what, this is what, and this is what was approved. No, this, no, is, this is not. This oh, okay. is not, this is the revised. Okay. What was approved was a this was, transom. Oh, you know, was this one, yeah, okay. This that right. was approved. Now, and right. then, so if you go back, you can see uh, what, what took place is the bottom light was split in half, and then in order to make that look uh, symmetrical and aesthetically appropriate, we then added four lights at the top, those, those, those transoms at the top. That way, the bottom um, mullion would not split the one of the, and come up in the middle of one of the top transoms. So, I don't, I, I don't know if I read this or I heard this, but it is the issue that you cannot get tempered glass large enough for the, well, just before we go, is there, I guess can we just put the whole procedure? Does anyone have any other questions about or comments on procedurally how we got here? Are we, we satisfied with? We talked about that issue, ready to move on to the substance of the certificate. Or I didn't want to cut anybody off on. I mean, I, I spoke to that, but I didn't know if anyone else had anything that you wanted to add. No, I, I'm good. I, I, you know, I'm kind of getting caught up because I wasn't here with the first approval from what I remember. So this is helpful for me to see that other photo. If you, Jason. Um, this is, this is so I, I guess what we're moving on to, Byram, is okay. is 
whether to approve or disapprove the. Well, we're getting ready to get to that. I just okay. Want to okay. Make okay. Okay. All right. Well, so let, let's move on then to the substance of the of the um, request for the certificate of appropriateness. So, go ahead with your presentation, if you will. Right. So, um, so as we, uh, what was it, six days ago or or, or so, uh, in speaking with the Highlands Glass Company, the, the people installing the glass, obviously they are installers and they get the glass from a glass manufacturer. And uh, the glass manufacturer will not warranty a piece of glass larger than 60 square feet. Um, what was previously approved for the bottom pane was about 90 square feet. That's a 90 square foot piece of uh, double pane tempered glass with a low E coating. Um, the, the problem is not that it is, it, it is physically possible to make a pane of glass that large, but the company will not warranty that glass. So it would take a crane to install that piece of glass and the likelihood of that piece of glass breaking is, is fairly high. If that glass were to break during installation, the glass company would have to eat the cost of that piece of glass. It, was, it would never even be installed. It would just uh, be broken. For those reasons, uh, in addition, I, I might add, the manufacturer also does not warranty the low E coating for a piece of glass that large. Uh, because over the 60 square foot dimension, uh, it is prone, the low E coating is prone to dimple and to, to get streaks over time. And so they will not warranty the glass. Um, for that reason, they reduce the size of the bottom pane and basically cut it in half. Um, you know, there is, like I said, it is you know, technically possible to get a piece of glass that large. And in larger cities, uh, they do this frequently, but there's no one in this region that will put a piece of glass in that is that size. And so we're kind of bound to, uh, for those reasons, uh, we're bound to, to basically cut that bottom pane in half. And in order to make the, the window look, um, as I mentioned before, in order to make it look right, we, you know, I think they divided it up into four panes instead of having the three panes, because otherwise, if, as you can see, the the bottom mullion would come up, and and be in the middle of a top of one of the top lights, and so, um, so that's why there's four lights instead of the three on the top. And just to give you background, uh, it's, you know, some of the ways that we could achieve a one sheet of glass and the way they did it, um, you know, back in, in 1908 was with a, a single sheet of plate glass, but that is against building code and it's, it's also just extremely dangerous. We can't do that. Uh, we have to apply the low E coating, uh, which is an invisible film that reflects sunlight back and and we that's necessary in order to not make that essentially a, a solar oven in that space it would just become extremely hot um, without the low e coating well i think that's a um, an important point i mean obviously what was the, correct me if i'm wrong or tell me if i am right so what was approved was essentially um, a replication a restoration replication of what had been there originally, which is on all the pictures, and mm -hmm. you have plenty of photographs to, to see what was there, which was the large large glass at the bottom and then the three, the three transom glasses at the mm -hmm. top, which matches what was down the street. Right. Which what matches what was down the street um, on, the, on, the, on the current. Right, so right you see there, right the there. one large pane and then three yeah. on top. Yes. Right, and so that is what would be uh, what would be um, easily approved according to any kind of preservation um, materials that we would be mm -hmm. using as guidelines and what would be appropriate in our district. 
right. and so that was what was approved. So it seems that the only reason to deviate from that would be uh, uh, inability to get those materials right, and or some sort of um, um, coding, coding, C-O-D, coding right. obstacle that would be contemporary and would prevent, would prevent it. And so um, I think that's what it looks like we're starting to deal with, mm -hmm. maybe, but I think that's the discussion point is that your the materials and this code business? Mm -hmm. it, am I right on that? I think, I think you were yeah. Well, that. well said. Yes. Okay. So I I think we proceed from there mm -hmm. to make sure that um, because it's 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 a it's not an easy it's not an easy change to make. Right. Because it's going from what was going to be really a an easy right a e perfection. Yes. For the district, which is right. what our responsibility is, right. is to the community here, uh -huh. and and to something that um, is 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 different, a little right. different. It's not totally different, but right. it's it is a little different, and I right. don't think it should be made in haste or easily, but you know, right, with with great care. Exactly, and the just to reaffirm the what you see, you know, it will have an aluminum structure which will hold the glass in place and then over the aluminum will be wood mm -hmm. so it will still have a wood frame but underneath that will be the structural support of the aluminum and I, I think it I think it's useful to um, sort of dig into a little bit of you know what our guidelines provide and why they provide what they do you know that this is not just an arbitrary discussion, and and what in the Department of Interior's historic brief on historic storefronts um, talks about from a historical overview that you know during the time period leading up to this 1908 building, um, advances in the glass industry permitted manufacturing of large panes of glass at a reasonable cost. The, um, this allowed storefront. Uh, storefronts to have large expanses of glass framed by thin structural elements. And so, um, you know, that was a characteristic of this type of building that it would, that the storefront window would be as large of an expanse of glass as possible. That was available and desirable. So, you know, we know that is, we, we have the historical proof down the street. We know what it looked like and we know why it looked like that. And, um, you know, our, the historic brief also talks about the importance of maintaining the proportion area between the display window and the transom. So there's a certain look to these historic windows um, that this that they look the way they do because of certain factors, but also, you know, there was always the desire to have that big storefront as a wide an expanse as possible. And so the, the big storefront and the three bay transom is a look that's particular to this time and there's also the desire to make sure that what's done is compatible with the rest of the historic district and that it's you know consistent with similar buildings in the area which of course we have a building one building away from this that historically they were identical they had mm -hmm. the exact same and so this would be an alteration of that so you know, our guidelines, really when the storefront has been removed and is to be replaced, um, either call for a contemporary design where you really don't know what was there and don't know how to replicate it, or undertake an accurate restoration based on historical research and physical evidence. And so, you know, that's what we've, that's what we've approved, is an, an, an accurate restoration. So. This is an inaccurate restoration. This is, is not that. So again, as Betsy has pointed out, then you know the, there has to be a good reason to deviate from that. Mm -hmm. So one question I have is: Did you have you contacted any other install, installer other than is it Highlands Glass? Yes, I, we have. Uh, Keller Glass is another company out of Johnson City, um, and uh, again they're bound to the same limitations as Highlands Glass because this is, this is not about an issue with the Abingdon-based glass company. It's an issue with the manufacturer 
um, which is a larger company, and, and um, they're, they simply will not guarantee the quality of the product if it's over that size. Who's the manufacturer? Um, hang on a second. I believe it's True Light, right? True Light, thanks. Yep, True Light uh, aluminum uh, and glass products. Well, it must be aluminum manufacturer. The glass, what glass company? Glass manufacturer. True Light. Right, they're they're providing the glass in the aluminum frame. Well, when this first when this issue first came up, you know, it is my understanding that the, the message that got relayed back to me was that we can't get tempered glass that large. So I thought that was the issue, which obviously it's more complicated than that. That's the abbreviated version, right? But but I, you know, I did contact. There's a company called NT Glass um, in Nashville and Hendersonville, Tennessee, and I spoke with. Um, Nikki Loringer, who is their plant manager, and you know, I had a nice long conversation with her. These are, again, this is a manufacturer, not an installer, but mm -hmm. you know, she tells me that they install 11 foot by 20 foot tempered glass panels, manufacture them, and people are installing them daily. That that's you know bread and butter their business, and I explained the you know the, the situation we're working with, and she you know at first she was thinking well. Maybe there's a problem with it going into an, an existing space for glass that that's why this won't work. And I explained, no, this is all new construction that's been, con been. And you know, her response was, she can't imagine that there would be issues that would be prohibited based on the kind of, you know, they do this on a daily basis, much larger than what we're talking about. And so I don't know if. Are, are those a low E? Did those I, have I a low that issue to her, and she said that okay. you know, they deal with that. Like, well, if they be, right, if the they'd be willing to come to Abingdon, Virginia, and install this, uh, <laughs> well, they're not an installer; they're they're a manufacturer. Right, right. So there and is so, a disconnect there. Yes. Um, so you know, I, I guess we did reach out to multiple glass installers, and the ones that would be willing to do this project locally. Uh, did not feel that they could do this project with the pane of glass that large. Now I understand if you go to Asheville, if you go to uh, Knoxville, if you go to any larger city, you do see glass that is larger. But for whatever reason, this the, the supplier that is supplying the local uh, glass installers, uh, they, they do not warranty a piece of glass that large. Because this is this is a, a thirteen hundred pound piece of glass. This requires you know uh, a, a crane or a, a telehandler to install. Um, it requires special machinery. You have to be set up, and and be uh, that has to be a special uh, a specialty that you provide to install glass that large. If you go to any uh, building in this region, there you're not going to see a piece of glass that's over. You know, this would be a, a roughly 12 foot by you know seven foot piece of glass. They just aren't going to do it in this region. Now, again, is it technically feasible? Yes, it is. But is it practically feasible for this region? No, it's not. When you say this region, Nathan, you're—I mean, because you mentioned Asheville and Knoxville, which are just two hours away from here. Right. They're they're. Uh, those are not people that are, are, are providing uh, services to this area. I just well, wonder why they would bid on a project that they don't have the capability to perform. You, you're a subcontractor. I, I don't understand that really. See, and you know, we're making decisions that, and this this is in the very heart of the historic district. It's an extremely important building, mm -hmm. and this is going to be a stretch of storefronts that we're going to be living with. We won't, but <laughs> 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 some of us might be. But 
for decades, maybe even longer. And so, you know, it's a tough issue. It's, it's hard to Certainly. just say, well, you know, I think we are balancing practicalities with, with also preserving these buildings. And in this case, we're not preserving, we're, we are uh, putting something back in that had been taken out. You're, you're trying to replicate. We're trying to replicate, exactly. I mean, I mean, so, so we, obviously, the easiest thing for us would have been to leave the brick and not take that out. That would have made this project much easier. But that's not going to give you a great retail space if it's worth what you, if it's what you need. Right. And it will not bring the building back to, to, what, to its former glory either. Um, I, I, I wish this were an easy, you know, uh, problem. Um, you know, and part of the problem for us too is, you know, we make people take OG guttering down and put it half round because it doesn't mm -hmm. look right in the historic district. We make if somebody put if people put up the wrong kind of racing roof and it has little striations in it, we make them take that down because it's not right. Mm -hmm. So these, th you know, this is all about detail. Right. I mean, that's that's what you know. We're in the business of details. The details matter, but I would I would say that that half round guttering is readily available, and I would say that. Uh, standing seam roof panels without the the striations in the middle is readily available. These are things that are feasible to do. Now, obviously, uh, they may be a little bit more expensive. They may be a little bit more trouble to do, but they're they're feasible. And by feasible, I don't mean technically possible. I mean it's something that that is readily available in this region. And so I I feel like there is somewhat of a of a, a an exception here, and there is an argument for allowing a little bit of deviation simply because of the uh, the time constraints, the cost constraints, and just the the fact that it's just something that we have not been able to source. We we reached out to multiple glass installers. It's just something that we were not able to 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 find a supplier to install this. Well, but you've said within, and you have said, not but, but and you have said within basically a two-mile radius, I mean a two-hour radius. Correct. Well, so would you, would you address the, the, the difficulty of dealing with a, um, a, a purveyor that is from Knoxville or Asheville, what that would do to, the, to it? So the, the issue with that would be getting them to come to Abingdon, Virginia. Uh, there, everybody, in Every supplier and subcontractor right now is extremely swamped with work. And there's just a, uh, you're also looking at shipping something that is extremely fragile. And you're, you're looking at traveling, uh, you know, two hours away. It's, it's difficult to get glass suppliers to come this far. I can sympathize in your situation as far as coding and safety and uh, with the project that we're working on. Some of the materials and things that we would rather use mm -hmm. doesn't meet the standards of today's construction. So I understand your dilemma there. But I also prefer the original plan as far as I think it looks better, not that the better is a choice here, but it, it does fit the building and the neighbor buildings better. So I don't know if there's a workaround. I, I can appreciate all your all what, what you're getting at there, but I don't know if there's a, if it's, what I'm getting at is we may not have a choice, you know, to not as long as it meets codes and safety, I think we may have to, to look at this at a different way. Well, and I, zone it. I mean, not zone it. All, all, all I'm saying is that um, it's not, I don't think it's a decision, I don't think it's a decision to allow it should be made easily at all. And I'm just trying, what I'm trying to get to is if, if it's available as close by as Knoxville or Asheville, 
that's outside of this immediate region, but it's not a long, long way away. Well, let if me. The end result is what should be there, not because it looks better, but because it is, the, it is the authentic look that was approved, and <coughs> and it was approved because it is the better thing for the district. It's more compatible with what's around there. And let me let me also clarify, as far as me throwing out Knoxville and Asheville, those are two of the closest metropolitan areas. Mm -hmm. um, that does just because that is available in those markets does not mean that it's possible to get that here. Oh. So don't take that as this is definitely where we can get it because um, it, it in in dealing with with um, it's hard enough to get a local glass company to come and and do this size of a project. Um, as, because of the size of the glass, because you, you have to think about this in terms of what what they're trying to handle and the material handling is extremely difficult. You're, you're talking about a very heavy piece of material that is extremely fragile. And you're talking about the 60 square foot one. Now. Right, even, the, even, even, the even this, okay. right. Even this, it's difficult to get somebody to, uh, to come out and, and bid on the project and get on the timeline and, and complete the project. So I, I would think it, it would be very, very unlikely that a company from Knoxville or Asheville or, or wherever else would even be willing to come out and install a piece of glass that is this size. Because, um, again, if you break it, you buy it. And if it is broken or chipped or cracked during transit, then they just bought themselves a very expensive piece of glass. And so this is, it's not, this isn't, if this were any other durable material, it would be different. Glass is kind of a, a unique um, material because of, because of its weight and because of how fragile it is. And so, um, you know, I would say this would, um, you know, it would put in jeopardy our ability to put glass in these spaces if we were to, um, to meet the requirement of putting in the 12th foot piece of glass. The 90 square foot. Right. So I'm, I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, other than the low E coating, the glass is clear. It's completely clear, yes. Okay. Well, and the low E is completely clear. Well, that kind of gives a blue tint. Yeah, if, if it catches the light just right, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to make a statement that the other board members may not care much for, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, there, there have been so many different meetings about this building and about, about the storefront in particular that I'm at a place now where I don't think I would want to approve this until I see how it's going to be encased. I'd like to see the wood drawings so that we don't come back later and say, well, that's not what we approved. Uh, and so I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I, I do like the original version better, but I'm not at a point where I would, I would disprove this, except that we're not really seeing all the detail that we need to see. Uh, under the previous building owner, we asked several times for the architect to bring millwork drawings to show how all this gets encased, and we really never got them. Um, okay. So, and, and that kind of completes the picture for me. And then the reason we approved this ultimately was based on the assurance that it would be a 100% restoration of the original window in, in all facets. Every little piece of—I mean, that—that that was, that was what led this board to give our approval to that plan. Um, would there, um, you know, part, you know, part of the struggle also is that we're not at square one with this plan being submitted 
and we're being advised from the get-go, well, we, we search time out everywhere we can for glass like this, and it can't be done. There's no way to do it, so we, can we do this? This was a manufacturer's change that slipped through. It, I mean, the, 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 the contractor that's installing the windows made the change. And so I, I guess I just don't have that level of confidence that uh, how much, how much, how many different sources have we looked into? Have we tried to make this work through somebody installing this kind of glass? I mean, I just, you see, what I'm, and I, I'm not making this point very clear. This is all after the fact. We can't do it that way, but that's not what happened. What happened was the manufacturer changed it, and then we started looking into whether we could do it that way. So, would there be any benefit to taking some time to really digging into this and seeing um, if there? It, are contractors available to install it to check with you know these, this last company I talked with find out who their installers are so, I mean we can meet as quickly as possible that's not a problem uh, it's it, it's an important issue and I, I would be more comfortable before this board takes any action and making sure that we you know explore every possibility that we can to try to make it an accurate restoration before we talk about doing something other than so would, would that be useful? Well, what would be the level of evidence that would satisfy the board to show that we have gone through all the other available options? Well, one of the things he just said was to contact the people who manufacture the large panes of glass and ask who, who typically installs for them and to see if they would be willing to come to Abbey. Right, certainly. I mean, that would at least, I have to agree with that if it's not going to hold you up too, too much because that would satisfy, I mean, what I said earlier, I, I still think is that it's not, it's not a change that ought to be accepted lightly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it needs to be, ex ex um, it, the need to, it needs to be a change that's because we can't do it. It's impossible because of we can't get it. It's just exorbitant from this standpoint, or the, or it, you know it, the the code won't let us do this, that, and the other. And um, I know that you probably didn't you probably didn't realize that this was a a, a difficult change to uh, to approve. Correct. I, I mean, I mean, but and I wasn't here when this was approved either a long time ago, but. I, I agree with its approval in, in knowing what I know about historic preservation and policies that are on the national level is that the best thing to do is what you all decided to do, which was an exact replication based on the multitude of photographs that you see, and that's what should be, should be the goal. And if we don't do that, it ought to be for a, good, a really good reason. To know that all other options have been thoroughly exhausted. Yes. To, I, mean, the, I mean, it doesn't sound like... I don't know, I'm, I didn't read you right probably, but it doesn't sound like you've really actually drilled down to, well, here's what it would take to actually get something like that here. When it sounds like Byram has found that there is that glass exactly right. right. So, so the process, you know, once we, once we um, spoke with, with the, the glass company and, and and they provided the reasons for why it would need to be smaller. Mm -hmm. I did uh, do research on, um, you know, what, you know, on, on, on exactly what size of glass you can get. And, you know, I did find that there were other companies that do make these large monolithic slabs of glass. But, um, but that, that then prompted me to reach out to other local glass suppliers and they basically gave me the same response as, as the, the company that we're working with right now, which is that um, that is not available to them, mm -hmm. pieces of glass that large. So, um, you know, we could reach out to um, more glass suppliers uh, in other markets to see if they'd be willing to come in. Um, Again, speaking from past experience in, in getting other glass companies to, to quote jobs and price jobs, 
they typically will only price jobs that are, are within their region. So uh, we can, uh, as a matter of, of principle, uh, provide some sort of you know, uh, evidence that, that they aren't willing to come to this region and, uh, and you know, just as a good faith measure to show that, that truly every other option was exhausted. This company that Byram has researched, most likely they could give you uh, installers names pretty quickly, I'd imagine, if, if just a phone call tomorrow and, and, mm -hmm. and, and then find out if anybody would come to this area to install. And um, what I'm leading up to is if all of them say no, that we, we would almost become that it's not economic, economically feasible for us to do that. What is our next move? As far as if we know that that is exhausted, do we? And and Michael's the world cons uh, satisfied with the casework that we've done. Um, do we approve this or not? I'm I'm trying to shorten the time of his downtime as much as I, as we can. And I you know I don't you know we don't like having to come back every other day. Right, and I don't want to. Yeah, so yeah, I'm exactly. trying to expedite this. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense of what I'm getting at there? Is if if everything is exhausted, do we meet again to approve or disapprove, or can we? Or is this just a complete no? Is what I'm getting at. Well, well I, I mean, I think based on Michael's concern, we would need to see the um, the renderings for the detail work on the windows anyway. So we would have to. We're going to have to come back for that anyway, so I don't see we're going to have to come back for that. There's no reason to but my, take my, my point is, is if if he does show the renderings and all other options are exhausted, is do we still vote on this design or are we still saying regardless the other di design is all we can do? That's the question I have for myself. I, I, you know, well, I don't think we can answer that yet. I mean, I, I can't. No, I, I can't either. But but I, I mean, I just go back to the fact that um, unless there's a unless there's a, a really good true reason that you that it's impossible to do this, that we sh we should be doing what what the best right. what the best scenario is. And I guess is. I'm I'm struggling with the word impossible because right nothing's impossible. Yeah. I mean, really, I, we could pay somebody enough to come to this region, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm I'm struggling with this a little mm -hmm. bit because I don't know. You know, is it feasible? I think that's a better word because, because yes, technically it probably is possible to to pay somebody extra money. We can we can you know essentially double the price of this mm -hmm. of this glass um, to the point where it's, it um, the economic realities of the project would not support putting glass in, and we could it, it would probably be cheaper for us to put the the brick back mm -hmm. at some point, um, which we don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, I think it would be a disservice to this building to uh, to take that far as a, of a step backward. But th there does come a point where where the economic reality uh, meets what our our what we would love to see. And sometimes, you know, we have to figure out how to make those those mesh. So. Um, well, I think the problem is that we're always on the tail end of it. Um, you know, this. I would probably have a different attitude about it if, if you'd come and you'd said, we can't get this big piece of glass. It's not economically. Feasible. Well, for all practical purposes, we are at that point. The glass and, has, and, and also, it, the, the the big the big 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 thing to keep in mind here is when when you all presented this project to us to seek approval mm -hmm. the approval we gave was we will allow you to tear this brick out and put the original storefront in if it is an 100 percent accurate restoration and the response was yes we'll do that we're glad to do that we're happy to do that we will do it exactly like it was so, well, you, let me finish. So, it turns out that you're not 
you're thinking you're not able to do that. But right. again, we're, com we're coming in on the tail end again because that was the requirement that we gave there. So I understand that maybe you, you were thinking you would be able to, but now you're thinking you're not. But then again, the way that it's come before us is that it's just happened, it seems, without you all really even noticing the change. And then now that it's up there, we're being told after the fact, well, this can't be done. So that's all very, very problematic. And it's not just one thing, it's all those things together. And so I think that's why it's, it's not just a simple issue. Sure. And I do think that it'll be it the help it will help tremendously to know that you that you really have researched it and see what it is and then then the balance of, of whether or not of whether or not I mean we appreciate the fact that it is feasible but it could be cost way too much. Uh -huh. Yeah, all of those things we don't even know yet. Okay. And you know, it's it's up to us to try to bring it up to the best possible conclusion we can. Mm -hmm. and to not back away from it unless there's a good reason. And the good reason would be, you know, what we've what sure. we said. But I think we could meet again and it's just for sure. No, I, I and I appreciate that. And you know, this is, you know, it's um a challenging project that <laughs> that has uh continually evolved because of both just uh changing scope, yeah. changing ideas of what the building could possibly be, and then also discovering things about the building that we didn't know until we started digging into it. Right. So um, the, you know, the, the plan with the storefront, obviously, uh, and I think we made this clear initially, is that it, it can't be a 100% replication because that would involve putting in a piece of glass that's unsafe. You know, th there are deviations to from what it originally was to, to make it a safe and, and energy efficient building. And so uh, this is a continuation of that same spirit that we are, uh, our goal is to achieve a likeness that is as close as possible with the original while maintaining, while, while balancing the realities of modern building materials and just the the availability of of those materials as well. And let me ask you: Have there been any other changes that have occurred that, that we wouldn't be necessarily we would not have picked up on in terms of the exterior of the building? That we no, what about no? The the one thing that I did include in this um, request was uh, for some exterior lighting, lighting right. which if you guys would entertain that where, discussion. Where will those be located? So. Um, you want to go to the uh, to the the renderings, and then I'll. Um, it's kind of hard for me to. Can you guys see if I point them out right here? You can move that TV. Can I move this a little bit? Yeah, you sure can. Oh yeah. Can everybody see? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So what we're proposing is putting. Uh, if you see, there's two lights. One is an up and down indirect light, and the other one is a, an up light. So the up and down indirect lights would go here, 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 here. Kind of highlighting the, the, the columns and, and you know, putting the building as, in, to for, forgive the pun, in the best light possible. So, <laughs> Um, the the up lights would, would again follow on that same rhythm would go here 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 and here and these are not extremely bright they're a warmer light and they're fairly low lumens but it's just something to kind of give the building a, a nice presence at night uh, then then the final uh, ones would go here a light here illuminating the summer's uh, plaque another light here, and then following the same rhythm, uh, you would have light here, 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 and here, and then again, uh, you know, directly 
above that, they're there, they're they're there. Yeah. And these would be the small, the uplights are just the small ones. Yeah, you would actually they would sit this on top of the um, of the cornice, uh, and and you would really not be able to see them from the ground. They would we're basically trying to provide light without really. Um, showing where the source of the light is. So the only ones you would see would be these up and down ones. Almost those, right. exactly. Those would be the, the larger one. And those pictured in that submittal is black, but the, they would be the bronze color. Mm. So are you using the short or the tall? The, sh the, the tall. The, the short is just down. The tall is up and down. So okay. the, you're using the, the tall one on the first floor, but on the upper floors, are they, are they a different, smaller size? Correct. Okay. So the, the short ones will be turned, not down, but going up the side building, right? Is this the short, the short one? Is this the one that goes on the other level? So those are the, the up lights, and those would go on the, okay. the second and third levels. The, the one that just looks like a tube, uh, tall number two, up and down light, would be the ones going on the first floor on those first floor columns. The one on the the short one wouldn't be used anywhere. On that. The short one would not be used anywhere. That's okay. just strictly a down light, and and that would not be used. And these these tall ones are what fifteen inches tall and. The tall inches? is yeah five by fifteen. But they would be bronze. They would be bronze, the same color as the uh, as the up light. You can see that's that bronze color. I can't find the dimensions on the up light. Uh, let's see. The up light is, is five, yeah, five, yeah, yeah, five, directly below the picture, 5.23 inches uh, from if it was turned at a right angle. Um, so it's, it's roughly, you know, two and a half inches uh, would be the diameter, and then, you know, uh, it looks like it would be about. Um, you know, if it were pointed straight up, it would be less than, yeah, less than seven inches. Exactly, basically. yeah. So, does anyone have any questions or comments on the lighting? I don't. Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, approve certificate of appropriateness for the uh, light fixtures that have been submitted. So moved, is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Mr. Roll call. Mr. Owens? Aye. Mr. Lieber? Aye. Mrs. White? Aye. Mr. Weasel? Aye. So I guess back to <laughs> the that was room. easier. <laughs> <laughs> um, the I, so I, as you I, yeah, sorry. I got a quick question on, yep. the, on the size of these paintings. That I, I've got this picture here. Yeah. What is the width and the height of the, that? Of those are um, over here. They're on the middle. So it is Long. seven foot nine inches high. And the uh, the width is five feet eight inches. Okay. That's on the bifurcated storefront. Uh, yes, that's on the bi. Yes, what we're uh, submitting, submitting today. Yeah. Okay. For each one of those, is that right? So okay. this right here the three on this side. are the the windows facing Main Street, and it's five foot eight by seven foot nine. Okay. So it would, you know, without that bifurcation, it would be, you know, roughly 12 feet, a little little under 12 feet wide. So, um, so, so are we sort of, I guess, heading toward tabling this for now? And, uh, yeah, and let's, back in. I mean, we get back yeah. as soon as you want us to. That's okay. not a problem. It's not a problem. Right. Um, so let me ask you this. Uh, based on your feedback, what, what we'll provide in the next meeting would be a, a case, a, a, a case. drawing, right, a detail of the, of exactly 
how that wood casing will finish out. <clears throat> and, um, and then also more discussion on, on kind of what the, the fruit of, of all of our exploration for other options would yeah, be. Based, based on your digging further into mm -hmm. the possibilities. Yep. So yeah. you have some specifics of yeah. Yeah. who, what, when, yeah, where, what the yep. be, yeah, right. and the cost, the additional And the cost. warranty issue if it's... Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. We've come a long way. We, we started out a year or two ago with uh, aluminum frame and mapes and ele insulating panels in the bottom. Right. You know, so <laughs> right. We, we've come a long way. Yeah, yeah. And I think we'll, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to find something that will, um, you know, really stick to the, the heart of, of what we're going after. Um, on a positive note, the changes that are occurring on the roof look really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as you can see, if, if you guys get a chance, the cinder block yes. is coming up on the parapet, which obviously will then get a, yes. another layer of brick in yeah. front of that. Uh, as that's going up, we'll, we will be, um, you know, doing a, a hand patina to the, the new brick going up. That's all um, right. I remember you saying that. Yeah. And then we've sourced, uh, we've been able to save most of the terracotta coping, but we've also sourced some other terracotta coping that's actually vintage. Um, mm -hmm. And so we'll be using that uh, to, to cap it. Um, and I, I, you know, I understand this, this uh, is a little bit of deja vu. So, uh, <laughs> and I, you know. There, there's been hiccups in this, yeah. this project and, and and they'll be all resolved right. in the end. It's just getting through that process. Yeah. But what I would ask, I think, is a concern that everybody on this board has is changes being made and we're not being um, in the loop, so to speak. Right. And then somebody in the public recognizes it because that, every, not everybody, but there's a lot of people that are watching this with, yes. with a microscope. And so they, they they alert some things you before. Yeah, I, really, really, yeah. Right? I didn't know that. Wow. Just really, people are watching. So just a little change. It might not have been. Right. You may have not have known right away, but somebody saw right away. Yeah. So you know we need to be in the loop with this to prevent these things from. Absolutely. Happening. You know. I I, I kind of agree more, and um, and and this you know this is. Uh, again. You know, Jason called and said, hey, it uh, looks like this is different than what was submitted. And I, you know, uh, that was a frustrating moment for me because mm -hmm. cause, uh, I won't, you know, I won't say, I'm, I may have said a few choice words. Um, mm -hmm. And so this, you know, this is a, a, this doesn't, it's not a good look. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a, a, a another stub toe. Um, and so, you know, I do apologize for that, and so we're we you know obviously it, we are very aware of the of the scrutiny that this project is under, mm -hmm. and so um, you know how exactly this this was approved without without uh, the the difference being uh, cited. Uh, I'm not sure exactly you know how that happened, but um, but. We are making every effort to, to give you guys as much information as, as we have it. Another yep. positive note, when you start your next project, then you've learned a lot from this one. Absolutely. <laughs> We've learned this is from a, an engineering, from a, a code issue, and then just from a, uh, you know, just logistics of this project. It's been challenging, but it's also, I think, ultimately, it'll be very rewarding. So oh, well, I have a question. And, yeah. And this is going to irritate you, but... <laughs> I've got a I've got a very thick skin, so you're not gonna. When you talk about two of the tall light fixtures on this here and here and then on that corner floor, on that corner column, yeah. mm -hmm. you're gonna have one that faces Court Street, and you're gonna have one that faces Main Street. How are you gonna do that with uh, exposing conduit? On the, let me just make sure, because this is like giving free advice from our. <laughs> <laughs> That so column there. You're, you're gonna, the one that goes on the column at street level. Okay. You're, you're gonna have one there. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Then so, gonna, so that conduit will actually run above the ceiling, and then it will run uh, down the the back side, and be 
painted basically the same color as the brick on the back side of this, and then it will come out through the through the masonry. So if you're yeah, standing the at top. the door, if you're standing at the door to enter the building, you're going to see a vertical piece of conduit. It would be a half inch piece of, of conduit, yeah. That uh, that's essentially the only way to get the, the wiring to that point. There's you couldn't um, router out the. Uh, between the bricks and then put it back in. That's because I know this brick is really tight, isn't it? It is. And, you know, I would be afraid that that would be more noticeable than the conduit, and it would be permanent. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you're kind of cha you know, yeah. you would be making a groove in the brick, and then just have to route. You'd have to route that in. Uh, also, the wire would have to be in conduit. Right. In the original brick, that, that's a piece of the original brick. Yeah, that's some of the yeah. original brick. Yeah. This way, if if for whatever reason down the road, if they didn't want to have that mm -hmm. light there, mm -hmm. they could take it out, mm -hmm. and and there would be no. Mm -hmm. There'd be a hole in the brick then. There would be a, a hole in the brick, which would be a lot better than. Then a trench. Yeah. Is so that there? There are already holes, some holes already, so it wouldn't. You know. Do so you have any? Uh, Mike, do you have any good suggestions yeah, on that? No, I don't. I just, I just uh, well, I've got a, a You're captive audience. Are you assuming that the column is, is hollow or is it blocked to, to fish the wire through? It's, is it, it has a steel column, as best as we can tell. There's a steel so column that is wrapped in masonry. But it's there's no way to get up inside of it to fish the wire down that we found. We might, you know, that might be something that we... Um, so you know, if it's an I beam, you're hoping that hollow space is. Right. It might there might be some space, unless they grouted it solid. Obviously, we'll, the you know we'll we'll our attempt will be to make that as least you know, inconspicuous as possible. So there may be some way we need to get up. You know, some of this you kind of have to tear out some in order to explore to even see what all of your options are. Is there a ceiling part right there? Yeah. So what is that material? Wood. It is wood. Yeah. So could you not fish it through that? Yeah, we, we'll come up through the ceiling, but then being able to get down inside the column is the part that we would have to take some masonry out. Maybe even take it out above the um, above the ceiling height. You know, we could see. I, honestly, I'd, before I put my foot in my mouth too much, that would be something that we, you know, um, I'd have to confirm exactly what that juncture looks like at the top. As long as it can be hidden as, as much as possible, would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and they make you know. Half inch is, is kind of the smallest you can you can do, um, and uh, we again we would paint it to match the same color as the brick. All right. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Um, Great. Well, we'll we'll get to work on on the. Does he need that information? Oh yeah. Here's the. This is just the, the company I spoke to. Oh, great. Right. Yeah. Oh. I got my scribbles That'll off speed up your research. Yeah. Yeah, I think I actually. Is, that name looks familiar. I might have run across the The person I talked to was the manager, Nikki Wolfinger, I think. Okay, Hendersonville, Tennessee. Okay, yeah, not not North Carolina. Gotcha. Yeah, Nashville and yep. I think Nashville. Yep. Yep. Yeah, okay. So, I, mean, we, I mean, we obviously remain very excited about the building. We don't want to. Yeah, to yeah. Anything other than that, it's going to be a fantastic project. It's just getting through these. these right. Well, thank you for your. We just don't uh, want you to make any money. That's that is my goal. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Your this, decision to become a contractor. Right. I asked for it. You know, I sometimes wonder why, but uh, <laughs> no, it's it'll all work out. Uh, the only profession I know of where you could amass a fortune and then lose it all in one project. Yeah, it doesn't take much. 
it doesn't take much. So um, <laughs> well, I've been I've been doing this for 17 years. Wow. Wow. This started when I was pretty young. Elementary school. <laughs> right out. I was started when I was 17. Um. So yeah, it's but it's it's dynamic. That's for sure. Well, it's coming along very well. It yeah, looks, it looks really good. I think it's going to be great. So just so, let us know when you're ready to get back together, and we can get in okay. a few days. We can pull them within a few. Okay, yeah. terrific. All right, great. All right, thank Thanks. You, thank you, Nathan. Is there uh, any other new business? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Move and second. Roll call. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mr. Weaver. Aye. Mrs. White. Aye. And Mr. Weaver. Aye. Thank you all. We're adjourned. Yeah.